reaction is for mature audiences only. So if you can't stand the heat, stay away from the fire. Another beautiful day to be a raider, draped in the silver and black. I represent the shield, I represent the swords. It's that time of night again, Raider Nation. And you come back. Why? Because it's time. Time to bring them. What's up, Raider Nation? I am the Commish. Coming to you live, as always, from Hardcore Challenge Live Studios. And where is that, might you ask? Because I'm asked that all the time. And I just tell them like this. It's just down the street, past the house with the boarded up windows. Make sure you stop and ask my man Joe. He's always on the corner, or at least in the vicinity. M maybe laying behind the bush, but he's a gentleman and a scholar, as well as a man of commerce. Slipping a little something, something, and he'll point you in the right direction. You're going to take a right, and then a left. And as you find yourself strolling down the street, you're going to pass a deep, dark, creepy-ass alley to your right. As you stroll past it, a cool breeze hits you that chills you to your skeletal core. 
Is it the autumn wind? You got damn right. Should you venture down that deep dark alley? Well, of course you should. Because what you'll find at the end is a little place that we like to call deep. Behind the enemy line, this is Raider Reaction. And as it is every Wednesday on Raider Reaction, it's time for Ghost to the Post with Prime and the Commission. It's the Raider Reaction resident sports guru. Prime joins me again, as he has every Wednesday this wonderful 2018 season. To rip through all of the games on the docket and make our picks and see which one of us comes out as the prognosticator of NFL games, which hasn't been me thus far. But what's up, Prime? <laughs> what's going on, Kamish? Just another beautiful week for football. We're in week seven. Been some surprises here and there. Uh, again, yes. Every week, it seems like. Uh, yeah. Been some shockers. So. Some sh some games that are just a bloody mess. Chip, chip, cheerio. <laughs> Correct. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, I forgot to. I didn't get mine added up here. <coughs> I'm, told, I'm so slacking. So last week, you had a great week. After I'd come off a, a, a solid week of an 11 and 4 week, you had an 11 and 4 week, and I completely tanked. At four and eleven, and where I gained ground, I lost big time. And this week, I gained a little ground on you. Gained a little ground on you. Oh, did you? Yes, not much. You went seven and eight this week, and I went eight and seven. Oh wow! Ooh. So I picked up one game. <laughs> one game. So, every little bit helps. What up, Joel? Helps, yes, yes, every little bit helps. So, you are now sitting at 51 and 42 on the season. And, uh, excuse me, I forgot to add mine up because I'm a freaking slacker. And, um, is that new math? It's new math, man. 43 <laughs> and 50. So, I'm seven games under 500, but. I picked up a game on you. I picked up a game. So, yeah. Small. All right. Well, let's see how we do this week. We're getting, we're getting, uh, we're almost to mid season. So, we are, we are in fancy football. You are mid season. So, it's, uh, oh, yeah. It's that, it's that time of the season. Unfortunately, up my fancy football team. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they really. Another rough go at it, man. They're really pissed down their leg this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Along with the, the Raiders. So. I eked yeah. out a victory, you know. I had a fantasy victory this yeah. this week, so. Yeah, you suck. I'm chasing you. I just can't seem to catch a break. Can't catch. No. I lose when I score 180 points in fantasy. That's just garbage. It's just not even right. How do you score 180 points and lose? The, your opponent scores 181 yeah. or more. Yeah. That's. So, first game, Thursday night. And those of you watching with us, please make your picks along with us and join in the conversation. Throw your comments up in the comments. Make your picks along with us. And uh, we'll see how we do in week seven, throwing down the gauntlet of... He's been abducted. Nah, I just had some technical issues I had to fix up real quick. Live TV, folks. No nets. Without a net, that's what you get. All right. Denver. First game. The Donkeys. Two and four at the one and five Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals got a win. Cardinals did get a win, and they didn't look half bad doing it. Larry Fitzgerald got involved, so that's always a good sign for them. Um, meanwhile, it, it is the Broncos, and I tell you what, I, I am going to pick the Donkeys this week. Uh, I'm going with the Broncos. 
there's just not enough consistency on offense for the Cardinals in their defense is, uh, well, it's porous, we'll say. So, porous. yeah, I got to go uh, Denver. I'm, I'm, I'm going donkeys as well. I just don't see Arizona. Uh, the same thing, man. They won one game. And they were they're on the verge of being the worst team in the league prior to one game. So, I mean, even though Denver did terrible and Case Keenum did not look good again, he seems to put up stats and he'll still throw touchdowns in the mix of all that. So, even in there, they're still going to score. And I don't know if the Cardinals are always going to score. They, they're not that good. They're just not a good team. And – well, Case Keenum basically sucks through three quarters and then puts together a pretty decent game in the fourth. And in fact, I think most of his touchdown passes this year have come in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, interceptions, the first three. So if the Broncos can get fourth quarter uh, Case Keenum all game, then yeah, they'll have no problem with the Cardinals. Yeah, I have uh, Case Keenum sitting on my bench in fantasy football because somebody dropped him. I just scooped him up to be a dick because he's a starter. And I don't want to leave him out there. And um, yeah, right. Yeah, so that was a good call by you. Yeah. So and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I came back later and I looked on my bench and I'm like, holy shit, he scored 29 fucking points. Like he was my highest score out of all three of the quarterbacks that I have. And you know, three quarterbacks. Why are you hoarding them? I'm a. Yes, I am. That's why your team sucks. Because you got three quarterbacks. <laughs> hey, my team sucks because guys got dinged with concussions and just all kinds of shit went wrong, man. My, How do you only score four points out of all your individual players on defense when I got Khalil Mack and TJ Watt? How the fuck is that even possible? And my defensive back. Khalil Mack went out with an injury. I, my defensive back went out on IR. I accused the defensive back from the Vikings. Free, free, free. Come on. You, you got you got to come up with something better. This. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> she got prime. She got prime. <laughs> man. Nah, man. It's too cold for bugs here. <laughs> 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 if, if if that's a roach, then that roach is wearing a scarf and earmuffs earmuffs right now. Oh man, that's funny. That's funny. You got him though. He he, he did he did the look. He did the look. So moving on, we both. Where are you going, Cardinals or Denver? We're both taking the donkeys in the first pick. Move, let's move on to. Uh, I'll try to follow along on the NFL.com. I keep trying to go off the sheet. Uh, Tennessee. Yeah. At the Chargers, the three and three Titans who just got blanked at the four and two Los Angeles Chargers. Who people are ranking the Chargers in the top ten in the in the league in the power rankings right now? So, well, that's you know it's it's often that West Coast teams get overlooked just because of how I don't know late they play and not, just the way that the sports media market works, but. As of late, people have been paying more attention. I mean, if you think about it, um, they've got the longest tenured quarterback in the division in Phillip Rivers, who's uh, who's not bad. He's a slinger. He's he's not bad. He's all fantasy um, gold, man. He's one of the top fantasy quarterbacks again. He's yeah, Melvin Gordon, one of the top running backs. Like, yeah, they got a defense. Yeah, he's a poster boy for meaningless stats with nothing ever to show for it. Okay, well, I'm going to pick is. him to beat, beat the Titans. Is he not? 14-2, and two, and what did they come out with? Nothing. A fired coach? I mean, come on. They are, he is the poster boy for <laughs> great stats and never getting them done. Right on. Well, I'm picking him to win this game. I'm picking him as well. <laughs> I, believe, I, I believe they're going to win. I, I've been saying I don't think Tennessee is a good team, and uh, their new uniforms are fucking stupid. But besides that, <laughs> I don't think they're a good team. And I don't think Mariota's that great. And I, I just – I don't believe in the Titans. I haven't believed in them at all. And I haven't for a while. They're, I, I don't think they're that great of a team. So, I think uh, the Chargers, unfortunately, look good. 
And Philip Rivers is putting up stats again at a Pro Bowl pace. So yeah. it is what it is. I got to pick the Chargers. Damn. Real quick note on Marcus Mariota. He's actually a pretty good quarterback. If he had an offensive-minded head coach or a creative offensive coordinator, he'd be much better off in this league. If he had the kind of coordinator like Matt Nagy or whatever in Chicago, you know, or even Kansas City there with uh, um, the big boy you don't like because whatever. I'm not even going to talk about him. Anyway, <laughs> no, nah, Mariota would be good. I watched him play at Oregon. So, I mean – well, he's he, he's a talented quarterback. He's just an, a totally – he's on the wrong team. You know, I see lots of guys play in college. I've seen Tim Tebow play in college too. Whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Tebow. Uh, Get the Tim Tebow up out of here. <laughs> oh. All right, moving on, moving on. New England. All and right. The Bears, four and two New England at three and two Chicago. Trubisky is uh, seems to be holding it down. At, he's got him at three and two. Uh, they obviously they got Khalil Mack added to their defense, so the defense looks stellar. But New England is like that is like just that big fucking rock at the top of the hill in like the fucking cartoon, and somebody just like pulled the stick out and the motherfucker hits rolling down the fucking hill. They're four and two. They look like the goddamn Cheatriots always look like they're they got Edelman back. They're healthy now. They're four and two, and do they just keep rolling now? They'll keep rolling, but I think they're gonna stumble here. Um, Chicago Soldier Field, October. It's no it's no easy place to play. Although they are from New England, it's cold there too. But um, that Chicago defense. Well, if Khalil Mack is out. If yeah, he is out. I don't know. I'm not – I know he has the ankle injury, but I don't know what his game-to-game game is. I need to follow up because he's on my fantasy team because – Yeah, yeah you all you got to do is click on his name. Yeah, I, well, no shit. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> I had my team up here. Hold on. He will give me the most up-to-date information. Yeah. Yeah. Khalil Mack, how's that ankle? I have three players. If Khalil Mack plays. On my injury report. If Khalil Mack did not participate in practice today, he did not participate in practice, and he is day to day. It's more like a cautious approach, they are saying, out of Chicago. So I'm guessing Khalil Mack. Yeah, practice. but he makes their defense like world class. So, um. But he don't need to practice. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet that he plays because he's tough. He's he's gonna play, and if he plays, Bears win. No, I'm taking. New so England. I'm going Bears. I'm taking New England in this one, Prime. I'm taking New England. I don't think. Did you? I just watched uh, Tom Brady have a shootout with the, what they're saying it's supposed to be one of the new up up and coming young guns in Mahomes, and 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 the old son of a bitch and cheating bastard still won, and he. Mitch Trubisky is not going to hang with, with Brady in, in a shootout. I, I just don't see it happening. And I, think I don't think it'll be a shootout. I think the Bears' defense is better than Kansas City's. Um, it's a given. I, I, defense may be the neutralizer. And I think any coordinator on the in the NFL, after seeing what happened last week, with the um, three minutes left and Tom Brady does what he does. Can't get it's a field goal to win it, man. You can't give him the ball with that much time left. There's just a, there's a – No. Him, Aaron Rodgers, there's just a handful of them. Guys. You just can't give him the ball. Yeah, those two. With that, those with two. Left, they'll carve you up. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're deadly accurate. When you're accurate, it's – I mean – Aaron Rodgers sticks the ball in fucking sick places, man, that you just shouldn't be able to humanly stick the ball. Yeah, he can throw. <laughs> You've got uh, Buffalo at Indianapolis. Hold on, I probably went completely out of order there. No, I didn't. I stick with it. Buffalo 2-4 and four at Indianapolis 1-5. and five. These are not – these are two very bad football teams. Um Old Neckbeard just doesn't have a lot of talent around him still. They, they haven't put anybody around that guy at all. And Buffalo, they're saying the coach is losing the team after his bad 
move to put the quarterback in, and it just completely blew up in his face. And so you got two teams in a really bad situation. Who do you go with here? Uh, I'm going to go with the Colts because – I don't know. They've got the most drop balls in the league. There's no real reason to think. But, I mean, the Bills are pretty bad, too. They showed up against Minnesota, and that was about it. Um, Minnesota was overlooking them, looking at the Rams, and they still lost. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Colts. T.Y. Hilton's supposed to be back. And uh, he's a game changer. He's a good He's a good player. He's a good receiver. He's the, easily the best receiver on that team. And if you give back, uh, you know, if you give – Andrew Luck, a good receiver, he'll wing it. He'll throw it, man. He's running for his life. He's like the most sacked quarterback ever. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Colts. The Colts. I'm taking the Colts as well, Prime. I, 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 Buffalo is just a bad team, and they're trying to, to make the move at quarterback, and I think that it's blowing up in their face. He's going to lose. He's losing the locker room is supposedly the story out of Buffalo, and it's – it, it's a real shit storm in Buffalo. They managed to stumble to a couple wins, which is shocking, but they're, they're not a good team, and I think you see it this week. Indianapolis, I believe, is a little bit better than their record, even though they're bad. I don't think they're one in five bad, and I, I think you'll see that this week. I agree. Having T.Y. If they got T.Y. Hilton back, as long as Andrew Lux got somebody to sling it to, he can sling it if he's got a little bit of time, and Buffalo doesn't have that. They don't have yeah, don't get it twisted though. They are one and five bad. Yeah. I mean, they got a porous offensive line. Their defense is terrible. They got running backs that don't do anything. They oh, got wide receivers that can't like catch the ball. They got tight ends. Three and three. You know, Tennessee is one and five bad, and they're three and three. So I, I don't know. Tennessee's got a way better defense than Indianapolis. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. It's just, maybe I'm maybe it's just because I hate their uniforms so much. Pick yeah, up. you got to get over that uniform. No, you look at the play on the field. They should stuck with the Oilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe that. I don't even care if they were the Tennessee Oilers. I could have gotten over it. Fuck it. Who gives a shit? You already did it the first season you were there anyway, so you had to roll with it by then. You already made the decision. Should have stuck with it. But whatever. All right, Detroit. Or excuse me, missed one. Houston, three and three. At the three and three Jags, and man, did Jacksonville look like shit last week? Houston has climbed back three and three, and the Jags have kind of slid to three and three. So you got two teams a little on the uh, different direction. How do you see this one, Prime? Well, Bortles is just inconsistent. He'll he'll look like an an all NFL quarterback one week. He throws for like four touchdowns, 429 yards. And then the next week, he throws two interceptions, you know, to, to defensive linemen. You know, that's how, that's, Bortles is, man, he's hot, he's cold. He's a Katy Perry song. Yeah. Um, but I got to go with, uh, yeah, for real. Uh, I'm going to go with the Texans on this. I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's generally a good team. They've got good wideouts, and, you know, and Deshaun Watson does his thing. If he can uh, keep his uh, jersey clean, give him time, and not have him run him for his life, then absolutely, man. They're, yeah, they're going to win. That defense, they got the meanest – well, I don't know if it's the meanest defensive line in football, but it's right up there with, uh, you know, J.J. Watt and, 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 and Jadavian Clowney. So, one, I, yeah, I, I'm going. I'm going Texans. It's, I could go either way on, on the road. I, I could. I could go either way. I could see Houston's on the rise. They, they've been, they've looked pretty good. I need him to throw the fucking ball to Will Fuller a hell of a lot more. I traded first round draft pick for that son of a bitch in fantasy, and he ain't caught shit since I made the trade. But I need for real, to see him. <laughs> first round draft pick. I need. I yeah. yeah. Mm. I finally got a trade for Kirk Cousins. Anyway, anyway, I did pretty good on it. Um, I'm going meanwhile, to, I think I'm going to go Jags. I, I I think the defense is going to bounce back to make it hard on you. I think it's going to make it hard on Houston this week. And uh, Bortles does enough to not completely screw it up. And um, I, I think they bounce back. That it was 
it was really epically bad game against Dallas, and I think they bounced back this week. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go Jacksonville. I'm gonna go the opposite of you on that game, Prime. I think I think the Jags at home will will take that one. But you know, I hope there's some points scored because I need Will Fuller to score some goddamn points. <laughs> yeah, I always root for shootouts, no matter what. Now. Next on the docket, we've got Detroit. Two and three Detroit at the four and two Miami Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins are sitting tied with the Patriots, who, who like I said, they've all of a sudden, they're starting to look like their same typical old selves. Can the Dolphins challenge? Can they take down Detroit and stay in that hunt with the Patriots in the uh, AFC least? I'm going to say no. I think uh, the Lions are going to go to Miami and win. I think Matt Patricia, you know, former uh, defensive coordinator for the New England Patriots, knows Miami really well. And uh, with that, he's going to give them what they need to go down there and win. Miami's been slipping as of late. If I'm not mistaken, they've lost two in a row now. Yes. Um, Yeah. And I think they're going to slip a little further and – Ryan Tannehill's not starting. They're starting uh, uh, Blo- uh, Brock Osweiler. Yeah, no, no, that's not happening. Brock, Fuck no. I don't care how he did your last game. Oh, he's hell he's no. not I'm good. Detroit. There ain't no way in hell I'm picking Osweiler's ass to lead anybody to anything. How the hell he – Right? How the hell he came back he... – If the Bears had ever thought that they, they were going to lose to Brock Osweiler, it just – yeah, no. That's not going to happen again. No way. I don't see it happening either. D- Detroit's going to go down to Miami and take care of business. Osweiler is not going to get the W. It'll be Detroit w- winning that one for, for damn sure. I I don't see that one anymore. All right. Now, next is an interesting game. You've got the 3-2-1 and one Minnesota Vikings on the road playing the New York Jets, who are 3-3. Three and three. Kind of a shocking three, the sneaky three and three, the Jets. They, you know, they're kind of they're kind of hanging around. They're only one game out of first behind the uh, Patriots and the Dolphins, so they're, they're right in the argument. What do you think about the Jets? Sam Darnold's playing pretty well. He's slinging it down the field. I think he's a better. Well, he's been playing a little bit better uh, than even um um uh, what's his face. Oh, uh, 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 Mayfield. So, um, I don't know. I don't think the Jets are going to get it done against Minnesota, though. Minnesota is starting to get to their rhythm. Um, their defense needs to catch up. They were a good defense last year. Um, they need to have their defense uh, step up. I know the Jets have a good defense, their lines. Um, but I, Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, your old boy, Latavius Murray. Yeah. That Vikings offense set is, on my is, is good. Bench this week and put up 29 points. Man. Do you not? Man. Yeah. If Dalvin Cook is hurt, I you know. start him. I had Marshawn Lynch and Tevin Coleman starting as well, and James White. So it wasn't like I was sitting. I started scrubs. I mean, those guys. Well, Tevin Coleman's been hitting. Yeah. What's Marshawn done for you? He hasn't done that bad, actually. I mean, Marshawn's actually done pretty good. This last week, he tanked, though. Didn't do shit last week. Yeah, that was like, a, I think that was a team effort. Yeah, that was, a, the, the whole team pissed down their leg last week. It was it was a cumulative effort. <laughs> that deserves that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going Vikings to win that one against the Jets. All right, Vikings. I'm taking Minnesota as well. Uh, the Jets. The Jets are a sneaky three and three, but they're they're a suspect three and three as well. I think it's fraudulent, and I don't think they're as good as that record is. They're the Jets, and you know Sam Donald's got great hair and all, but that, that you know I don't give a shit. Fuck his hair. <laughs> great hair. <laughs> Moving on. Tim Tebow had nice hair. Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> I just have, you know, I have hair. I don't even know. I don't even know. I have no idea what Tim Tebow's hair. Are. All you people, <laughs> anyway, all you people in your hair, 
Fuck you all. <laughs> Carolina. Yeah. Three and two Carolina at the three and three Philadelphia Eagles. Who the Eagles are three and three, man. And you know, it's it's been a minute since we've we've stuck the voodoo doll, so I don't know if he, he needs another period. We, you know, maybe maybe soon, but <laughs> he seems to be he seems to be doing his job. Voodoo doll. Yes, because they can't win again. And, you know, see. Man, they, they came off the- you need to worry about your own team instead of making voodoo dolls for other teams. That's that's trifling. <laughs> they, had, they, they came off the kitty table. We had to have a whole ceremony. <coughs> Dark forces aligned. Steve Juice was born that night, and it was all bad shit happened. So we had to have a voodoo doll to put the, you know, some shit down. Sorry. So this is actually a tough one to call, though, <laughs> because both teams are pretty good. And a- with that, this is a good game. I am going to go Philadelphia. Philadelphia. God damn. I don't want to ride with you on all these prime. I thought I really thought you were going to go Carolina on that one. You you always you you usually ride with Cam Newton. You, you kind of shocked. Yeah, if Carolina was at home, if Carolina was at home, I would. I, I really thought you were going to go Carolina on that one cuz I I was I feel strong that Philly's going to take down Carolina because they're at home and um I can't. Yeah, has looked spotty. I mean, they got a winning record, but he hasn't done it. Greg Olson is back. Man, that makes a big difference. He's his go-to guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I think the uh, this will. I hope this is a shootout, though, and and I I think the Eagles will come out on top at home. So I, I need some I need some fucking Zach Ertz action. That's for goddamn sure. That's for sure. So yeah, we're both we're both rolling with the defending champs in this one. And next on the docket, we got the Cleveland Browns, the two, three, and one Cleveland Browns. Baker Mayfield still holding it down at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jameis Winston's back in under the center, and they're sitting at two and three. Both teams on the way down. They both need a win bad to get back up to 500. Who do you got in this one? Well, since you asked, I, I'm going to go Buccaneers here. Um, the Browns are still the Browns. Uh, Baker Mayfield, he's an exciting player. Um, he's still a rookie. He's going to have his growing pains. And I think Tampa Bay is starting to um, – I mean, they got some weapons with Mike Evans and and uh, Deshaun Jackson. Um, they got that the third wide receiver. Um, what is, oh. uh, Godwin. Yeah, yeah, Godwin. He's caught a touchdown in like five out of six games or something like that. Not bad at tight end either. They they don't have a terror. Their defense is just fucking terrible though. Their their defense, the statistics for their defense uh, this season, it ranks them epic uh, among the worst defense in the history of the NFL statistically. That's how bad they just fired their defensive coordinator this, uh, like a day or two ago, Mike Mike Smith. They're that. Bad. Oh yeah, I heard yeah. that. Yeah, they're they're bad on defense, Re- really, really, really bad. So, you know what? I was gonna go the Bucks as well, but I'm go. I just talked myself in to Baker Mayfield tearing up that fucking defense, that shitty ass defense. I'm on. I'm gonna go Cleveland. I say the Browns climb to 500 at, at three, three and one <laughs> coming out of Week Seven. <coughs> Sorry, I keep coughing. I'm, 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 I'm playing injured this week. Oh, way to take one for the team. We appreciate it. <laughs> hey, I like winning. No, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going Bucks. Bucks. Tampa Bay. It's a beautiful area. It's nice. Yes, it is nice. <laughs> it's all right. Now. Moving on, we'll hit uh, – this is another really good game, Prime. Possibly one of the games of the week is you've got four and one New Orleans. Um, they're looking like a Super Bowl contender. I had them as a Super Bowl contender last season. And, uh, again, this season in the NFC, 
they're playing Baltimore, who's four and two, a sneaky four and two, and they're looking all right. Flacco's got so he's got some targets now. He's got a little bit of help. They brought Crabtree in. They're not looking that bad, and they're at home. New Orleans on the road. I don't know though. Drew Brees. They brought in Horton Crabtree. They brought in like a a new host of pass catchers in in Baltimore with like John Brown and some other dudes. Um, new tight end, but I am gonna go Saints on that. They got that thunder and lightning. I, I'm I'm a road dog this week. I, the, Baltimore's got a nice record of four and two, but I don't think they're anywhere near on the level of the offense that the Saints got going on with Sean Payton calling the plays. You got Drew Brees out there who's basically another coach on the damn field. The guy just set the all time passing record for the NFL. I mean, he's he's got weapons. You got Michael Thomas, you got freaking Kamara, uh, Ingram's back off suspension. They, they, they've got so much freaking talent. I they're going to keep getting better because they've got everybody back now. I I think it's New Orleans in a in a freaking landslide. Oh, in a landslide? Like a blowout? Yes. I think it's a blowout. I think Drew Brees has one of those games in Baltimore and just tears them the hell up. Nice. Nice. Well, I think they're going to win. I don't know if it'll be a blowout, but they're definitely going to win. Probably by about 10 points. Well, I, I agree they're going to win. So I know. You're never, never going to gain ground if you I just know. agree with me. Well, now, I've, now, now we've got – let's hold on. I've got one, two – only three so far that we haven't, haven't went uh, aligned on. But, you know, that is what it is. This next one is a three and three Dallas at three and two Washington. Uh, both looked bad weeks ago, but they both kind of turned it around. Got some wins here lately. And what do you think? You've got uh, Dallas looked good last week. Yeah, this is uh this is truly one of the NFL's best rivalries, uh, Cowboys and Redskins. Um, having once lived in, in, in Redskin country. Um, yeah, I've seen it live. So, uh, one thing because of this rivalry and the fact that the Redskins are at home, I'm actually going to go, I'm going with the, uh, the Washington racial slurs. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to pick one. Alex Smith is not a bad quarterback. He's a good quarterback. He's better than Dak Prescott. Now, right now, they'll ever change the name of the Washington Redskins. Do I think they'll ever do it? Yes. No. No. They don't care. Always one. No, what, what? What? Snyder? Dan Snyder? Oh, that dude doesn't give a shit. Nah, man. That guy's a putz. He could care. No. <laughs> I don't think they'll ever change it. I mean, the NFL has this, like, Teflon Don sort of thing going on. You can, yeah, ooh, Redskins, your name is racist. Or, man, you can't call. Like, did Native Americans start this protest? Here's your answer. No. So like maybe, maybe if maybe if it were the other way around, if there was like you know some Native Americans out there that said, "Hey, we've got a problem with the with the Washington Redskins, with the Atlanta Braves, even with the Kansas City Chiefs, or whatever." Any, I mean, I don't think any of those are really derogative, Red except Chief for Wahoo I guess Redskins sounds kind of like it, right? Anyway, Chief Wahoo out of Cleveland, he's done. He's done this year. They're running him out. He's gone. Who? No more Chief Wahoo, Cleveland Indians. He's gone. Oh yeah. Hmm. They're they're a little iconic mass kind of I mean, he's their mascot. I mean he's not their name, but he's their mascot. Right. But they got rid of him because you know I guess yeah. Chief Wahoo was was too drunk. <laughs> What's wrong with Chief Wahoo? I can never actually like the Ravens because they took football out of Cleveland. I don't care what team you're a fan of. All right. But Cleveland without a football team is not right. The Cleveland Browns should be in the NFL always. And they took football out of Cleveland, left, moved like, it to Baltimore, and made it a stupid bird. Yeah, it said, like, you know, fuck you. You keep your shit. You, keep, you know, you keep your team and your name. We don't even want it. We're going to go. We're starting all new shit. We're going to be, you know, black and purple. We're going to be the Ravens. 
Yeah, it was purple. <laughs> purple. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. <laughs> All right. You got, got that purple. The... I don't have the purple tonight. Purple. What's that? Yeah. Somebody say purple drink. How? <laughs> How? Yeah. Drink. I was in a, I was in a league for two minutes. <laughs> for two minutes. Now I sell cars and and and. <laughs> <laughs> I eat cheeseburgers to sell cars. That's all I do now. Yep. <clears throat> I could use it, Lions. I could use it. Get a little something here. Little All right. Something. Now I'm lost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I picked the Redskins over the Cowboys. Who do you pick? Redskins over the Cowboys. I'm taking the Cowboys in this one. I think the Cowboys shot, saw a little life. I don't think Alex Smith's that good. Um, I, and I need to pick up a game on you. I'm going with the Cowboys in this one. All right, all right. I'm going with the Cowboys. Now, next, you've got the Los Angeles Rams at the one and five. Rams, next. <laughs> Rams, do we? Do... Uh, come on, no, no, no possibility for Bethard hooking up with his old homie tight end from Iowa, and you know, no, none. No, Not even. no, a little bit. Hold on. He's a high school football coach in Mobile, Alabama. Who's a high school football coach in Mobile, Alabama? Juarez. Juarez. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Man, no, the Rams are going to destroy the 49ers. The 49ers are going to – they're not a good team. I don't care. That was – that was savage. That was savage. <laughs> uh, the... Adios, Leslie. Thanks for tuning in. As always, Leslie, and a whoop whoop to you. Um, whoop whoop. Uh... <sighs> Rams. Yeah, I, I can't. Make, I can't even make an argument for the Niners. I can't. No, I'm trying. no, they've really got a. Their foot, their coordinators seem to have no. They got nothing. They've got nothing. The forty nine man, nah. They got one. Now these next two games, Rams. These next two games are pretty good. You've got, you've got. Well, I don't know. The Monday night game really sucks. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. The Monday night game sucks. That's gonna be a. Sh that's gonna be a shit show. But uh, Cincinnati, this game's a good one. What I'm what, interested in watching, uh, Cincinnati at Kansas City. Um, Cincinnati is my new my new starting quarterback is Andy Dalton for the remainder of the season because I benched Derek Carr for for the foreseeable future on the silver and black attack. So um, he, he's went to the pine along with Amari Cooper. They they just can't they can't carry it. They ain't getting it done. They're gonna trade Amari. I tried to trade Amari. I tried to trade his. So is Gruden. So is Gruden. I, I Gruden tried to. <laughs> Gruden's out back by the shed in a fucking Dollar Tree fucking Chucky costume gutting our team right now. That's what Gruden's doing. I, I don't understand it. It's it's some sort of strange ego trip, but he's he's slaughtering the team. And he's gonna he's gonna win with his roster built by his guys his way, or he's not gonna win. Yeah, that is absolutely true. Jason. I believe that. He's going to strip that team down, and he's going to rebuild it and make it, I don't know, he's going to get Rich Gannon out of retirement. Mm. I think he's a coach. Anyway, <laughs> so Bengals and Chiefs. Rich Gannon, Rich Gannon's in the booth. He ain't coming out of this cush-ass job. No way. He, don't, he didn't even want to go work with Gruden. So you got Cincinnati on the road at Kansas City. Kansas City's typically a tough road destination to have to play at. What do you think on this one, man? This I think this is a big game right here. Four and two, Cincy, five and one, Kansas City. It took 
last minute heroics for Tom Brady to beat the Chiefs at home. Yeah, that alone, uh, I'm going to Kansas City. Yeah. I'm going Bengals. I think the Bengals can take this one. I, I've, their game. I've been watching the Bengals more than more than I typically have because I've I, I've seen over the past few weeks I was probably gonna have to start making a move at quarterback for my fantasy team. So I've been I've been watching him and the the Bengals have, have actually looked pretty good. I, I oh. they're they're sneaky good. I, I don't know. We'll see. I I think a little you've seen a little chink in the armor this last weekend and. Uh, even though they put up a lot of points, they took a loss, and we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm going Cincinnati. It should be good. I mean, A.J. Green's going to have a field day against those Kansas City D-backs. Like, yeah, saying, it should be good. I think they're going to air it out, man. I think they will air it out on Kansas City. It's going to be a shootout, just like you've seen against New England. Yeah. So, yeah, Chiefs. Yeah. Chiefs win. <laughs> no, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Bengals. I'm going to go Bengals. And I need to grab a game from you. You know, I've got to come up with a little strategy here. There's only so many of these games that I feel that the other team really has a, a realistic chance. So I got, I got to kind of pick a couple to, to that I've got to. I got to pick up some games here, man. I'm down. I'm down. Fifty-one and forty-two. You're sitting. At oh, stop! It's Black Panther, y'all. <laughs> Guess what? I got that purple, that purple, that purple, or <laughs> that purple drink. Get that purple. <laughs> purple drink. I got that purple. Get off my yacht. Uh That leaves one game. You got the New York Giants at the Atlanta Falcons. One and five New York. The New York. The Two and four Atlanta. Atlanta is not. Man. Good. Atlanta just, I don't know what's up with Atlanta. And Fire the coach. Tricky. Fire the, co fire the offensive coordinator. Or something. Steve Sarkeesian. Fire that man. Well, that's what happens when you get to the Super Bowl and you lose, and then their their entire coaching staff got raped and pillaged, and you know they ended up everywhere, and they didn't. You know now they try. Now they've got the team. They lost all the coaches, but the Giants are bad. I watched the, yeah. the Giants game. Oh my god! Poor Eli Manning. Just Saquon Barkley balls out of his mind. Eli Manning's got this oh fuck look on his face like all the time. All the time. And he's just All like, the time. I don't know. I don't even know what to do. He's just slack jawed looking and with oh fuck all the time. Odell Beckham's talking to inanimate objects and and, and he, the dude's a complete fucking nut. It's <laughs> the owner basically told him to shut the fuck up and play this week. Did you see that? The owner no. in a press conference, it, as nicely as he could say it, told Odell Beckham to shut the fuck up and play. Well, the Giants got all kinds of problems, so there's no way in the world they're going to win this road game in, in Atlanta. No. Atlanta. No. O o Odo Beckham's a, a, a talented fellow, but he's a douche. Douche of the universe in all the galaxies. There's no bigger douche than you. <laughs> he, he, he's a douche. <laughs> I'm confused. All right. <laughs> So, who do we have on a bye week this week? Uh, hold on. I, I'm going Falcons. You going Falcons? I'm going Falcons, man. The, the Giants are terrible. Eli Manning could possibly lose a kidney in this game. It's going to be that fucking bad. <laughs> he, can he can lose a organ out there. The, 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 man, I, every every game I've seen him in, he, he's just got this poor deer in the headlights look like he's just getting murdered. He should have walked away a season or two ago. It's it's unfortunate. The guy's got two rings, man. He's gonna go out on a fucking stretcher. It's it's unfortunate. That's what it's gonna take, man. There was so much like there there was some 
uh, some weird mojo going on in New York in the New York locker room when Eli got benched last year. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That was so Eli was benched. I forget who they even put in there. Oh, but, man, there was, there was, was weird mojo. Yeah. That guy. That, that Manning's a royalty, man. You can't bench a Manning. Well, and he's got – the dude's got two rings, and he had, like, this Iron Man starting streak going where he hadn't fucking not started a game in, like, forever, and you're going to make him a healthy scratch? Like, what the fuck kind of shit is that to do to the, like, what, the greatest quarterback you've ever had besides Phil Simms? You know, that's – Okay. The only guy you can make an argument for. Jeff Hostetler? Well, Sims technically has only got one ring, right? Because the well, Haas, Sims does have, yeah. Haas won the other one. So, Eli's got two. He won both them bitches. So, you could make an argument for Eli. Yeah. As the greatest Giants quarterback ever. Two Super Bowl rings. But that would be your – that's the <sighs> – Stats wise, I don't know, and that's what I'd have to see before I crown him the best uh, quarterback in New in New York Giants history. Because I, I'm sorry, I mean Trent Trent Dilfer has a has a Super Bowl ring, like yeah. Trent Dilfer has a Super Bowl ring oh. and trophy, all that. He's a Super Bowl champion. Yes, yeah, so is Brad Johnson. Yeah, there's a, there's quite a few of them. Oh, Brad Johnson. Super Bowl, just because you're on a Super Bowl winning team, even if you're the quarterback, does not make you the greatest at anything. Jim McMahon, he was very, he was a good, at best, a good quarterback. Yeah, yeah, Willie Galton, like, and, and uh, uh, oh, Peyton, yeah. Walter Peyton. Yeah, you know, yeah the refrigerator Peyton Perry. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the, one of the greatest defenses ever on the other side of the, the ball, you know, that just gave you ungodly field position, scored points. You hardly even had to score because the defense scored so goddamn much. Yeah, it's it's yeah, the fifty-two defense and whatnot. Forty-six. Yeah, forty-six. Forty-six. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. I'm telling you, I'm playing injured. I'm playing injured. I'm playing IR. Mike Singletary. All right. So there's a bunch of bum quarterbacks that have Super Bowls. Yeah, and I, Eli is one of them. Man, the only reason he has one of those is because – what's his face? Uh, oh, I can't remember the wide receiver's name. You don't back your way into two Super Bowls, man. That's two Super Bowls. It happens. <laughs> I've seen it. I have this argument I've with seen it. Joe all the time. Joe, Joe, you know, the one that's on the corner points you in the right direction. That guy, I have this conversation with him. Because he's a Giants he's fan. He's real? Yes. He's a Giants fan, and he hates Oh, did he own the gym? He hates Eli Manning. And I'm like, how the fuck can you hate Eli Manning? That man got you guys. Because he's a bum quarterback. That's how you hate him. He's like, I just can't stand him. He, I just hate David him. Tyrell, thank you, Chris. I, I, Tyrell I, I, pins that ball up against his helmet, and Eli Manning's a legend. Well, and the other one. Now, granted. The other catch was just as insane. Who was the other guy? other obscure ass wide receiver that caught the other one like on the sideline of the other game which was the other crazy ass catch that was that was that Plaxico Burris was that Plaxico Burris no 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 it was um um shit who the hell was it fuck oh I can't remember It was David Tyreek, wasn't it? Was It wasn't Tyrell. Yeah, David. It was Tyreek. Was it Tyreek? I don't know. That, Eli Manning got lucky. The, He's a bum quarterback, man. And the sooner they have someone else starting for them. Victor Cruz. Victor Cruz wasn't. Well, he was good. I don't know what happened to him. He got hurt, and I think he was in Green Bay for a minute or something like that. I don't know. Like, he's not in the NFL now. He pulled something doing that stupid salsa dance, and, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All for right, this Jason. Always appreciate you stopping it. All of you, we always appreciate you stopping it. Each and every one of them, uh, we always appreciate. It. Yeah, we're band of pirates. Oh, dude, I'm only running about fifty percent, Jason. You're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
I'm, I'm a lunatic, I, and I think I'm based in logic. I so I dial it back tonight. I've been I've been off the chain the last few nights, you know, because that's what happens. My team's one and five. I, I, I go to temporary insane. Well, man, yeah, 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 yeah. I had to dial it back a little. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, it's like the best bye week ever. So, Prime, we talked about the last Mitch. few days. The fight game has gotten interesting here. Now we've got Floyd Mayweather saying he's going to fight Khabib. You've got saying it's uh, he's been offered big money, big con contract to fight Conor in a rematch that they've offered him was yeah. guaranteed of up to fifty million dollars. Dude, he does not want to fight Khabib. Oh my gosh, yeah. Khabib would turn Mayweather into potato salad. In the oh my, game? it wouldn't even be close. I don't know. Boxing ring, I don't know. Oh, in a boxing ring? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A beep could never stand with him in a boxing ring in, a, in an octagon. In the octagon. Why would why would a beep take a boxing match against him? him? A, beep's, a beep's best weapon is to is to tackle you and lay on top of you and punch you in the face. Yeah. That's what he does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's in our. That's right. You know the McGregor, Cruz went to the Bears. The McGregor fight's going to happen. The rematch is going to happen. But there's there's so many crazy scenarios that could happen before it. Uh, I, I I just wonder. I just wonder if they they put John Jones is fighting. Yes, huge news, man. I, I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna go out and be watching that pay per view. Um, yeah, against Alexander Gustafson. That's going to be a good yeah. fight, man. That first fight between those two was an awesome ass fight. And uh, one of the best fights I've seen in a long time. And, and uh, I yeah, well, one of the best fights I've seen in a long time. It was a close fight. John Jones won in, in a decision. Some say that was questionable, but I say you have to beat a champion. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Now it's you know there's there's no need to ever see John Jones fight Daniel Cormier again because he'll just murder him. So it's it's good they just stay the hell away from each other. John Jones should fight other guys because I don't even want to see that fight again. That fight, I've seen that. Fight. I would watch that fight again. That fight. I would watch that fight again because I mean, why? I got the only reason why is because Daniel Cormier is like the he's a he's a tough out. He can beat everybody else, but including Gustafson. Him, so I wouldn't mind seeing him get punched in the mouth. I don't know why. I don't like Daniel Cormier. He's a smug prick. <laughs> I don't like him either. But he's effective in the octagon. He knocks dudes out. He submits people. He's good. He's good. And you know what that means. That's but it can't be John Jones. Post with Prime and the Commission. Make sure you join us next week as Prime will be back as we'll rip through all the games for week eight. And hopefully he feels better. Hopefully. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> Thank you for joining us as always. New and old, our band of pirates. Thank you for joining us as always. I am the Kavish. I will be right back here tomorrow night. I believe I will have Captain Jack in studio with me for the Raider Nation Ricochet. But we will see. We will see. That's the plan. But regardless, I'll be here. Thanks for joining me, as always. New and old, our band of pirates. Congratulations to our Canadian brothers to the north. At midnight last night, was legalized. Smoke them if you got them. Thanks for joining me, as always. I will be back tomorrow night. Same Raider time, same Raider channel. Followed by Black Friday the following night. Same Raider time, same Raider channel. I'm out. Peace, love, Raider Nation!